Our 2011 recent player inductee holds eight Grand Slam titles, an Olympic gold medal, career Grand Slam, and a Davis Cup champion. He's a champion of, champion of philanthropy and making this world a better place. Andre Agassi. <laughs> to, to introduce Andre today, we are very pleased to have with us, who's kind of emblematic of the Andre Agassi College Preparatory Academy, the valedictorian of the first class, graduating class in 2009, a student at Con Concordia University, please welcome Ms. Simone Ruffin. Hall of Fame talking about my hometown hero. <laughs> my hometown hero was an amazing tennis prodigy. He helped change the game from being known as a country club sport and revolutionize it to become one that the average person can learn and enjoy. What is it that motivates a man to dig deep and become the best in the world at his passion, experience great success, and then return to his community providing resources and inspiration beyond anyone's wildest expectation? My hometown hero had fans from around the world on the edges of their seat anticipating his every move, striking fear in the hearts of many an opponent, sending the ball in their direction at lightning speed. He made them run. <laughs> Expending their energy, destroying their game, and coming back with a power play, totally in control of the game. He wasn't always perfect, and that's okay. There was that mullet wig thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he showed us that even in the face of adversity, we can become our very best. <laughs> All right now, my hometown hero, he was larger than life and still made time to give back. A man whose first interview was before I was even born used his success in tennis as a platform to change the lives of my generation. To give some justice to such a life and such a career is a tall order, but I'll take a swing at it. <laughs> My community has had the rare fortune to have been touched with the love, compassion, and generosity of one man who is a game changer, proving that just one individual with a heart for others can make a true and widespread and lasting difference. He was a rare individual who saw the potential for change and created it where others saw hopelessness. He has transformed the way that we see our lives and the possibilities they hold. I live in this little town called Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Some call it fabulous. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a place of fun, excitement, and escape. A place where you can do anything or be anybody. But it's also a place where education and personal development tend to be a last consideration. Some even say that it's no place for children. People may forget that there is a community there. There's a community of youth with the same unlimited potential of children from around the globe. I personally am grateful that one man had the vision to reach back and foster that potential. In a time and place where few held out hope for the future of young Nevadans, one man's vision provided an inroad to success. But hey, we've all heard that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, our village has been served by my hometown heroes foundation that supports a child haven, a children's medical facility, a boys and girls club, and a school that is changing education in Las Vegas. My hometown hero gave back in a way that equipped people to achieve more. He gave something more than just money or even simply material things. He provided us with the tools to build our own lives. From this, we were empowered to be anything, to become infinite. Let me be honest, without his example, 
I may have possibly sometimes neglected to give back. But because of this great man, I have had the pleasure of knowing since elementary school, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, but I dare say one of the greatest men of all time, Because of him, I will never forget to look back and lift up others. As a student who has directly benefited from the actions of one of the world's most generous athletes, I am without words for the gratitude that I feel. I mean, like, where do you begin when one man has had such a profound impact on one's education, one's life, one's community? Um, people who have never met him will stand under the umbrella of his generosity. My hometown hero has led the charge when it comes to giving back. He has kept his eye on the ball on and off the court and is truly walking the walk. He has stunned the world with his love, with his love for others and is constantly used as an example of what we can do if we have just a little bit of what he has. Basically, he's shown us all that this is how you give back to your community. This is how you care for others. This is how you make a difference that will outlive us all. Our hometown hero, Spark of Love, has ignited a flame that has become a firestorm. One of our great-grandchildren will be leading the Alternative Fuels Initiative because of the opportunities that he is providing right now. My children will be the children of a clinical psychiatrist, and we'll use that to do, to, as a springboard to do just a little bit more than I did. My hometown hero will not only be remembered, but he will be honored through the actions of those who have been empowered to do so much, all because of a humble, generous man who played tennis. I am the voice of so many children. <laughs> I stand here and I am the voice of so many children whose lives have been changed by the generosity of one. The beneficiaries are everywhere. I mean, who could have possibly predicted that his first swing of the racket would become something that has transcended tennis and has made such a huge difference. From growing from remedial math to advanced math to the point where I was one of the top people in my class because of a great teacher who cared. Thank you, Ms. Manchin. <laughs> my very first internship at the Brain Institute. Thank you, Dr. Vernick. Meeting awesome mentors who are movers and shakers of our community. Thank you, Mr. Breitling. And for that word, we use all too often, opportunity. I went to Paris, and now I'm standing here at the Tennis Hall of Fame. <laughs> because you have brought these types of people to my life, I have done all these things. And because of your love, I will never, ever be the same. To this hometown hero, I say that you have changed my life. And because of you, so many doors have been opened for me and my classmates. The future Dr. Simone Ruffin, thank you. You are not only an amazing athlete, but you're an amazing person who I will always hold up as an example. From the students of Las Vegas, all the people whose lives you've changed, and from the generations after us, we love you and we will continue to honor your legacy. OK, so maybe you guys are wondering, um, who is this hometown hero? <laughs> well, he's the son of Mike and Betty. He shares both the footprints and initials of the great Arthur Ashe. He's the husband of fellow tennis legend, Steffi Graf. Yes. He's an inspiration of communities worldwide, tennis master, world renowned on and off the court, one of the best tennis players in the history of the game. What? One of the best role models in Las Vegas, forever immortalized here and within the lives of people worldwide. I give you our hometown hero, Mr. Andre Agassi. <laughs>
She's going to be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simone. <laughs> Something tells me you're going to be unstoppable in life. <laughs> I've, uh, I've stood at this podium twice before. Once was to introduce my beautiful wife, Stephanie Graff. I was so much more comfortable uh, that day because I felt the, the recipient to, uh, to be far more worthy. The second time was in my father's imagination. In his, in his mind's eye. From the day I was born, my father, Mike, saw this day in my future and described it to me many times. So my feeling of deja vu right now almost rivals my feeling of gratitude, almost. You know, not long ago, I was uh, giving a talk in my hometown in Las Vegas, and after I spoke, there was this uh, answer and question period. The first hand up, first questions out of the box, was a man in the front row. You could see in this man's face that he was really struggling with something. He took the microphone, stood up, and asked, how do you know when to stop telling your kids what to do? The questioner was my father. <laughs> I was cut off guard that night. I didn't know what to say. I, I don't remember what I did say. But the answers come to me now so, so clearly. Dad, when I was five, you told me to win Wimbledon. When I was seven, you told me to win all the four Grand Slams. And more times than I can remember, you told me to get into the Hall of Fame. And when I was 29, I don't know if you remember this, you told me to marry Steffi Graf. <laughs> Best order you ever gave me. So dad, please don't ever stop telling me what to do. If we're, if we're lucky in life, we get a handful of moments when we don't have to wonder if we made a parent proud. We don't have to ask them. We just, we just know. I want to thank Tennis for giving me one of those moments today. It's one of the many things in which I need to thank this sport. I look at Simone and the thousands of young people she represents at Agassi Prep. And I say under my breath, thank you, tennis. I look at my wife and my children, <laughs> who I live for, and I say thank you, tennis. I, I look to the future. My efforts to build high-performing charter schools in inner cities across the U.S., schools that will impact tens of thousands of Simones. And I say thank you, tennis, for making that possible. I fell in love with tennis far too 
late in my life, but the reason that I have everything that I hold dear is because of how much tennis has loved me back. I'm thrilled, humbled, quite terrified, to be honest, to stand in front of you right now. I felt vulnerable on the tennis court many times, but not quite like today. I've grown up in front of you. You've seen my highs, my lows. We've laughed together, cried together. But what is so clear to me standing here today is that you have given me compassion, understanding, love, more than I expected, many times more than I deserved. Tennis has not only given me much, it has taught me much. It's no accident that tennis uses the language of life, service, advantage, break, fault, love. The lessons of tennis are the lessons of maturity. In tennis, you prepare and you prepare, and then one day your preparation seems futile. Nothing's working, and other guy's got your number cold. So you improvise. In tennis, you learn what I do instantly affects what you do, and vice versa. Tennis makes you perceptive, proactive, reactive, all at the same time. Tennis teaches you the subtlety of human interaction, the curse and blessing of cause and effect. After you play tennis for a living, you never forget that we are all connected. And there's nothing quite like a tie break that teaches you the concept of high risk, high reward. Tennis teaches you there's no such thing as perfect. You want to be perfect. You hope to be perfect. Then you're out there and you're far less than perfect. And you realize, I don't really have to be perfect today. I just have to be better than one person. It's true. <laughs> All you club players, you remember that, OK? <laughs> Tennis is a lonely sport, probably the most lonely. You're out there with no team, no coach, and no place to hide. That's why tennis players not only talk to themselves, but answer. <laughs> and yet all that loneliness eventually teaches you to stand alone. The high standards that tennis imposes on us, the self-reliance it demands of us, that's the reason why tennis has produced so many of life's great game changers. One of the landmarks of our sport, our National Tennis Center in New York, is home to the Arthur Ashe Stadium. What courage Arthur showed, how fair he was while being treated so unfairly. Once Arthur grabbed hold of a truth, he was unwilling, not capable of letting go. Tennis gave us that man. He was and is a treasure, not just for America, but for the whole world, for those who have yet to be born. The Tennis Center itself is a Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, named after one of my personal heroes. Think of the seismic transformation Billy caused in society. Our wives, daughters, mothers have more than a hope for equality they have a mandated claim on it because of Billy. She did so much more than just inspire women. She changed the way men and women think about men and women, the way we all think about equality. She woke us up. Tennis gave us Billy. And tennis today has given me the chance to say thank you, Billy. 
Tenants gave me all my personal teachers that I owe a debt I can never repay. They lifted me up and carried me across many finish lines, sometimes literally. My dad, Mike, and my mom, Betty. My big brother, Phil. My friend, protector, and trainer, Gil Reyes. My coaches, Nick Boliteri, Darren Cahill, Brad Gilbert. And the person who means more to me than words can express, the woman who still takes my breath away every day, Stephanie Graff. Each one of them deserves a separate Hall of Fame speech, but of course there isn't time. So I've written a letter to each one of them, intimate letters, love letters, but they're not private. I want the world to know how I feel. So I'm putting them on my foundation's website where I hope they'll serve as a permanent public tribute to those who made this day a reality. They're the ones who made possible the highlights. They're the reasons I'm blessed with magical memories that help me sleep, sometimes keep me awake. Because of my father, I have the memory of the 92 Wimbledon, the 96 Olympics, and some thrilling Davis Cups. Because of Gil, I have the memory of the 99 French Open, his ear to ear smile in the fifth set when we both thought my tank was empty, but there's a few drops of fuel left. Because of Stephanie and my children, Jaden and Jazz. There was that day of my retirement in 2006 when I got to walk away from the sport on my own terms. They were there for me that day, ready to embrace the future, whatever that might be. These are my people, and these memories are seared in my mind forever. One of the most influential people in my life I met only one time. It was the most vulnerable time, a time that I needed direction and inspiration. And just then, there I was, shaking hands with Nelson Mandela. He took my, no. He took my hand, complimented my game, and in the same breath, told me the reason why we have been put here on earth. I can still close my eyes and hear his words of wisdom from that evening. He said, we must be careful in our decisions, careful in our words, and we must be careful in our relationships. Andre, we must live our life carefully. Once you hear those words from Nelson Mandela, you can never unhear them. I didn't always live carefully. I didn't always pay tennis the respect it deserved. I thought it was my career that was creating my angst, that tennis was the cause of my internal tension and disconnect. I didn't know myself and I didn't recognize that my troubles were of my own making and that I and only I could solve them. Only after being broken another tennis term, did I realize I wasn't being careful. But you know, rock bottom's an interesting place. I moved in and spent some time there. <laughs> it's actually not a bad place. It's a place where you get to ask, who do I want to be? Am I ready to take ownership of my life? For me, ownership meant growing up focusing every day on being just one day better. Ownership meant not only embracing tennis, but celebrating it. Ownership meant going back to the challenger circuit, feeling honored to be my own ball boy, feeling privileged to flip my own scorecard. Ownership meant feeling grateful 
for being and having the chance to start over. Climbing out of that hole that I had dug for myself, that's when I started choosing to believe that each of us have a plan for our life, a purpose to fulfill, body of work to create, a reason to be. I committed to taking care of myself and taking care of my tennis. Going from a ranking of 141 in the world back to number one was not an accomplishment. It was the reflection of an accomplishment. It was the symptom of good choices. It was the result of being careful. The highlights I experienced taught me what is possible. The hard times reinforced the consequences of me not being true to my character, of not living up to my expectations. These things have coalesced inside of me into a kind of code, a personal mission statement. I believe we have a responsibility to each other, a responsibility to create more than we consume, a responsibility to build things that will outlast us, a responsibility to find our own limits and push through them. Even when life's challenges weigh us down, make us unrecognizable to ourselves, we can always begin again. There's always time to thrive. It's not too late to be inspired. It's not too late to change. It's not too late. This honor today leaves me deeply humbled but it also makes me think of others who don't get their due. Teachers, nurses, caregivers, struggling parents, all the people who do the right thing, who win their own private grand slams. They know already what took me decades to figure out, that we are here to do good quietly, to shine in secret, to give when there's no crowd applauding, to give of ourselves to someone who can offer us nothing. Tennis gave me the chance to meet so many of these people, to travel the world and visit places where the human spirit shines brightest because life is darkest. Tennis taught me that the needs of this world are great, but they are no match, nor will they ever be a match for the human spirit. So thank you, Tennis, for my life. Thank you, Tennis, for my wife. And thank you, Tennis, for enabling me to find my life's work. In closing, to my son, Jaden, my daughter, Jazz, and every young person listening to my voice, the world that we're leaving you it's not the world we wish for you. You need to make that world, to go places we've never been, to succeed in ways we've never dreamed. Mandela said to me, there is difficulty in all human journeys, but there is nobility in just being a journeyer. From him I learned every journey is epic, Every journey is important. Every journey begins today. And at the beginning of my journey, my friend Gil said to me, Andre, you have dreams and I have strong shoulders. So stand on my shoulders and reach. To my children, to all of our children, stand on our shoulders, reach higher than we could, Reach for your dreams. Because today, standing here, receiving this honor, I am living proof that no dream, no journey is impossible. Thank you.